Now, pH. That's another thing we control. For your science people, pH happens to be the negative log of the hydronium ion and concentration of water based solution in gram equivalents per liter. Don't worry about that. It's a measure of how basic or acid or basic a fluid <coughs> liquid solution is. Okay? So you have a range from 0 to 14 pH. S 7 is right in the middle. That's, that's deionized water. That's distilled water. It's absolutely neutral. As you go to 1, you're becoming more acidic. As you're going to 14, you're becoming uh, more basic. And because it's logarithmic, a movement from 7 to 6 is a fraction in magnitude of going from 6 to, uh, to 5. And it's the same thing in the other direction. In other words, something that is 6 pH and then compared to something that is 5 pH, it's not just twice as acidic. It's like 10 times as acidic. So as you get further away, it becomes exponentially more and more acidic. That's why a few things go to 1, a few things go to 14. And water basic has a target of between 9.2 and 9.8. In every conversation I've had with, with an ink manufacturer since I started printing with water based inks. I've heard of stable inks that you don't have to add a pH solution to, but I don't, I've never seen it. Controlling pH is only associated with water based ink. You can use ammonia or amine, but the uh, amine is more stable. And like I said, the frequency is about every 15 to 30 minutes, you're going to adjust it. Now, measuring pH. Just like viscosity has that scientific instruments and stuff, you can get these fancy instruments and stuff like that, you don't need that in the press. What you need is these little things right here. Handheld, in, in, my, in the US, these cost 30, 50, 100 dollars, something like that. Uh, you don't have to get it very expensive. You can get about the cheapest one and have on hand multiples of spares. One breaks, you have a replacement. Okay? You don't have to be, and all, any pH meter, is probably, unless it's the worst pH meter in the world, is accurate enough for what you're doing. Method, use a handheld pH meter, make sure the ink is well blended, uh, follow the instructions, follow care instructions. You have to return that probe in a certain way, you have to care for this thing, and periodically audit it. You want to calibrate it, you want to make sure it's being calibrated, and, you, and, and that sort of thing. And use reasonable caution because there's a delicate glass bulb inside the pH meter. So why control viscosity and pH? When the viscosity is too low, the color can be weak. You're, uh, it appears you're using an, uh, an excessive amount of solvent, potentially. You can get dot gain because now when you're talking about process printing, and you're using uh, special ink for that. Sorry, and for those that don't know what process printing is, four color process printing is when we use four colors, yellow, magenta, cyan, and black, yellow, red, blue, and black, printed on white, or printed on anything, and their interaction creates a photographic like image. That's four color process printing. Well, the ink used for process printing can be higher in viscosity because here's your plate, here's your dot, and you want the ink to just stay around the surface of that dot. And a higher viscosity ink does that better than a lower viscosity ink that'll run out. So if your viscosity is too low, you might have dot gain. You want that dot to be like this, but as that ink spreads, you can have dot gain. That affects the color. <coughs> uh, if you have low viscosity, your ink film can be too thin. Or you can actually break it down to where now the film is not a continuous film of resin, but it's kind of broken. It can fail the GC's test, the gas chromatograph, where you're trying to see how much solvent was retained on the product. If you have excess solvent, it can impact those tests and cause failure. 
Uh, it can cause lamination failures. The, the, the laminate, the laminates. And when you go to correct, and, or you just go to replenish the ink with ink that is in correct viscosity, and you dump it into ink that is of low viscosity, your color density can change. You can go up in color. If your viscosity is too low, if your viscosity is too high, your color can be too strong. You can have ink spills because now maybe it doesn't flow out of the holes well as you have a spill. Your doctor chambers can leak. You can sling ink. Uh, you have, can have dirty image edges around your images. The ink can appear dirty. You can have dot bridging where between the process bridging. In some areas, the dots are relatively close together. Okay? Or not even just in process, but when you use dots. Generically, that's halftones. Process printing is a special type of halftone printing. A halftone is a, a, an image of dots. Okay? Well, if these dots, if there's, you know, they're nice and separate, if the ink is too heavy, you can actually bridge between those two, and now instead of having a nice dot, you have a, this <coughs> looks like a dog bone. Uh, it can dry too slow, it can track through the press, cause you problems, quality issues, downtime. It can offset, where when you peel it off the roll, on the back of the, of the film or the substrate is the image that was on the, the front. And it can block, which we, we, we talked earlier, where it, uh, it's difficult to pull off. When viscosity varies, the flow varies, behavior varies. Color shift, quality varies, unanticipated problems emerge. Now, my operator, instead of uh, walking this way, now he's going crazy. It's just everywhere. It's trying to, it's leaking there. Now, this is happening. That's it's a miserable situation. So you are out of control, and you're in for a miserable time if you're not controlling your viscosity. Water-based <coughs> resins, like I said, light and alkaline, uh, alkaline environment which is why we're so controlled, interested in controlling pH. The viscosity had all those negative impacts. Uh, we talked about how the water-based ink can get bodied up and solidify and all these things. Well, that's why we're interested in keeping the pH right. When the pH is too low, the viscosity might increase, drying rate may slow, the ink re-wets poorly, dirty print, dot bridging, uh, because a drop in pH, by the way, not only makes re-wetting diminish, it can have an elevating uh, uh, an effect on elevating the viscosity. So it's almost like letting the viscosity get too high. You can change and trap in four-color process printing. It's very important the color result we get when we print one color on top of the other. That's part of it. Well, if our pH is not correct, it can actually impact that tonality. So you can have a total impact of four color process. And in extreme, extreme case, the ink may kick out. Where you open the ink and now it looks like jelly. Instead of being a nice fluid, it's gelatinized. When pH is too high, you can burn the pigment, especially reds. You might have vapor retention in your product. You create an unpleasant environment where you smell uh, ammonia because you're keeping your pH too high and you might lower the viscosity relative to where it should be. <clears throat> when pH varies, you're out of control and in for a miserable time. You're no longer my happy operator. And I'm not happy because I'm your boss. Louisiana. Uh, year ago. This company made millions and millions of paper cups for the U.S. government. We had a political, or we had some situation. Money was kept from certain programs. The government no longer uh, bought cups from this client, and they were left with millions of blank paper cups in the warehouse, because they stocked it for delivery and all this, and had a great contract with the government. And by the way, this happened to be and industries for the blind association, they're not their operators, but they're, they're pigment, pigment, blind people. 
They were, they were blind people, so they gave them a vocational opportunity. So what do they do? They said, well, we have cup making technology. Let's add value to the cups by putting ink on them and let's sell to McDonald's, etc." So they bought a press and they had issues, so they called me in. I came in, the machine was running 30 meters, 30 minute, 30 meters per minute. The quality was poor, dirty print and all of that, and they were very frustrated. They were not controlling their pH nor their viscosity. So, we ordered a Zon cup, we got a pH meter, overnight, the next day, we controlled it, they, we took it up to 100 meters per minute, but because they didn't have a video camera, we had to slow it down. Beautiful quality, no problem tracking through the machine. All we did was correct the viscosity and the pH. So they couldn't see it, and now they ordered a camera. I went to Uruguay a couple of months ago, helped some folks down there, and they had a beautiful new press. Great doctor chambers but no pumps. In these doctor chambers, they were actually <coughs> adding ink just to the chamber. And uh, so they would, come, they would check the pH and the viscosity before they put it in, the, in the, the chamber, but they didn't measure it after that. And they were seeing all of these issues and slow and having problems. Okay. So what happened? That dirty print was tracking through the press and so there was waste and low productivity. So now we did this. We started fresh, checked the viscosity and the pH, put it in there, and we ran one roll. And when we were done, you could almost not pour the ink out of the chamber. Okay? So now what we did is they had a pump. For one station, we hooked up the pump where we were circling because their argument was, well, you know, it's a small job. You don't want to put a pump. It was, okay, let's try this. They put a pump. We ran three rolls, no problem, at high speed with that pump. Circulating the ink, we had greater volume, we had circulation, and we had control of the pH and viscosity. So the heat and the low volume was causing us a problem, okay? They were not controlling the pH during the run, because even though they had that phenomenon, if they would have run the roll, checked the pH and viscosity, they would have made the adjustment, but they didn't. Now, in my personal experience, uh, running water-based ink on paper and stuff was not a big problem. But it was a, but it was a big problem when I was working on envelopes, but it was a big problem on film. So, like I said, I operated, I worked from 8 o'clock at night to 8 o'clock in the morning running a big machine. I had an assistant. I would walk into that press room. First, I look at the quality of the print, because if it's not good, I'm stopping the machine. And we had continuous shifts. I would check the pH and the viscosity, and I don't encourage you to do this, but I'll tell you what I do, because I go to H station, and I smell it. And I've gotten to the point where I can tell by the smell whether, the PA, whether there's enough amine in there or not. It's a starting point. If I go through it, if the quality is good, and I go through it and I smell it, okay. I'm okay. Then I have time to check my pH and my viscosity. Now, if anything is not correct, I don't smell enough, or I check my pH and my viscosity, and it was not right, I stop the machine. Right. Well, you don't like to hear that. I either stop the machine now, or I adjusted it and waited until the end of the roll. And then I adjusted the pHs and the viscosity of all my pumps. I brought up the level of the ink to, to full. I wiped the surface of my plates because the, they weren't re-wetting well, and it also makes plates difficult to clean. So, inks and pumps. I highly encourage them. They, uh, they make it easier for you to control your ink properties. Okay? The volume in the pump, the higher the volume, the more stable it is. You want it to agitate, it agitates your ink automatically. You don't have to stir it with a little stick or something like that, like some people do. And the pump is accessible. The ink is, excuse me, now accessible to the, to the dip cup and to the pH meter. When it's just sitting in a pan or something, you don't have any access to it, especially 
in our web now. I'm sorry for speaking so fast. <laughs> now slow down. I get a little excited. I do love to preach. <laughs> to me, a press without a pump, without pumps, is incomplete. Now, I know that we can't always have it. And if I may deal, I may be saying I operate an incomplete press. But a press without a pump is incomplete. Okay? And unless a job is only for like a roll or two, I'm going to use a pump. But I'm going to learn to work effectively with that pump so it doesn't get in my way, creating the deterrent that makes it so that I don't use it sometimes. So the key to working with pumps is to work with them in a way that they don't result in more, uh, in more downtime than without pumps. So we want to be efficient about 